So this section will focus on orientation tolerances, but applied to features of size, like a hole or a pin. So in this example, I have a hinge, and how it mounts in the assembly is against the back face and along these two edges. Now this hole is very important, not where it is, because we can do adjustments to adjust for the location, but the orientation of it is very critical. So here we set up the datum features on how it mounts. Mounts to the back face, A, mounts to the side face, B, and the bottom edge, C. Now this hole, the important one here, is given a tight size tolerance for the pin to press in, and then we have a bigger location tolerance, a position tolerance of 10 thou, and then a tighter orientation. Because this hole is at zero degrees relative to the datum features, then we're going to use parallelism to control its orientation. So let's try to visualize these tolerance zones. When I say position diameter 10, parallel diameter 2, what does that mean? Well, it's actually two tolerance zones, two cylindrical zones with a zone inside of a zone. So you have your position of 10 thou, and that's just like a normal position tolerance. That's going to be fixed at the basic dimensions relative to the datums. Then the parallelism is a smaller cylinder that can float inside. So watch it float. Your axis could be over here, it could be over here, or it could be over here, but the axis cannot tilt any more than the two thou. So the position controls the location of it, and then the parallelism is refining the orientation. This is very similar to what we did with surfaces. We have a big profile tolerance to locate where the surface is, and we have a smaller parallelism zone that floats inside. But now it's just going to be a cylindrical zone, a position, and then you have a smaller cylinder that floats inside. So showing that orientation is a refinement of your location tolerance. So I'd like to explain this a little bit more with the inspection on this feature. How would you inspect parallelism, and how would the data come back to you? So what I've done is set the part up relative to your datum reference frame and the imperfect part is shown, and look how that hole is going to be tilted relative to its true position. This is representing the true position where it should be, and look how the axis is now shifted. And so I've drawn, greatly exaggerated here, the front of the hole where it's going to be, and the back of the hole where it's going to be. So can you see it kind of tilted up in that direction? So now we're going to measure with the device as simple as a height gauge, we would measure where the front of the hole is. We would touch the bottom, touch the top, halfway would be the center, and then go to the back of the hole, same thing. Touch the bottom, touch the top, halfway would be the center. And then we would rotate 90 degrees, and then we'd do the same thing to measure it in the other direction as well. And that's what we've done in this top view here. We have the front of the hole, the allowed tolerance was the 10 thou position, and we measure those deviations. How much is it deviated from true? Minus three, in the x plus 2 in the y. So remember our position zone, that's calculated as 2 times the square root of your x deviation squared plus your y deviation squared. We covered that in unit 5. And that would be a pass. Do the same thing with the back of the hole. Allow the tolerance zone of 10, you measure the deviation in x and y to get your actual. So that hole is in position in both the front and back of the hole. Now, is it within the parallelism though? Is it not tilted too much? So we do that by looking at the delta in your x deviations. So how much has it deviated in that x direction from the front to the back? So the delta there is going to be 1 thou, the difference between minus 3 and minus 2. Then we do the same thing in the y direction. What is the delta in your y direction between the front and back of the hole? How much has it tilted from front to back? So plus 2, plus 4, that range there is 2 thou. So if we're allowed a zone of 2 thou, and the x deviation is 1, the y deviation is 2, is that falling within a cylindrical tolerance zone of 2 or less? No, it's not. And that's because if this is 2, and this number is anything more than 0, then you're going to be out. So when you do 2 and 1, you do the trig across there, then that would actually be a 2, 2 zone. To visualize that, your front of the hole is here and the back of the hole is here. So we're measuring that x deviation, which is 1 thou, and that y deviation here is 2 thou. And we're trying to calculate this distance from here to here. That's going to represent the tolerance zone that you can squeeze down to just contain the front and back of the hole while staying perfectly parallel to your datums. 
So this hypotenuse here is what we've calculated as 0, 0, 2, 2. And that is more than what our specification allowed, which was only 2 thou. So what is it? It's max minus min. So max minus min, but you have to do a little trig now because you have to deal with the x and the y and look at the max minus min of the hypotenuse. Here's another way to visualize that. I kind of drew it freehand, but let's actually plot that on the graph paper here. So we're going to take the data that we've collected from our position tolerance and we're going to plot that out. So front of the hole was minus 3 plus 2, so minus 3 plus 2, and then the back of the hole was minus 2 plus 4. Now if you want to look at your position tolerance, that's going to be the smallest zone that stays centered on your true position. That's going to be represented by the blue zone, and that's going to be represented by this point 0089. Now for your red zone, remember that floats, and so you can best fit to the surface and only look at the front and back of the hole at the same time. So that's this red cylinder that I was drawing earlier, and that will represent the 2-2. Two -two. So you have a bigger zone of position fixed on the true position, and then this smaller zone that can float inside, so this would pass the position tolerance while failing the parallelism. Hopefully that made sense for you. I have an exercise for you to practice with that on your own.